Hi everyone, we are group B29 and the following video explains the concept of proof by contradiction. It will show why and where it is useful to prove by contradiction as well as a few examples for understanding. Why are proofs important? There are a number of reasons that computer scientists and engineers should learn how to solve proofs. The first is that it improves your ability to write and build code, algorithms, and complex systems. Second, it trains your mind to think about problems in a more formal fashion. And third, it gives you multiple ways to solve one single problem. So what is a proof? Simply, a proof is a written report of a thought process that is used to reach a final conclusion. The anatomy of a proof is as follows. First, we have the hypothesis, the statement that you are trying to prove. Second, we have assumptions of the hypothesis supported by a theorem or definition to support why that step is possible. And third, a conclusion that proves or disproves the original hypothesis. Proofs can be formed with very defined theorems and statements or informal with loosely defined logical rules. There are multiple ways to solve a proof, including proof by contradiction, proof by induction, and proof by cases. However, we are just focusing on proof by contradiction. What is a proof by contradiction? Proof by contradiction are a form of indirect proof. It does not prove a conclusion directly. Instead, you are to assume that the statement you are trying to prove is false. To do this, you first use the logical negation of the statement, then you create a logical argument to show that this assumption will be false. And lastly, you will find that the conclusion of the proof will show that you were wrong to assume the statement was false in the first place. And since the negation is false, then the original statement is true. So if you wanted to set up a proof of contradiction for a proposition, you would do the following. If you have the statement, if P, then Q, Simply the negation to this is P and not Q. So then you would create assumptions that would lead to the conclusion of the contradiction. Proof by contradiction should not be confused with proof by contrapositive. Proof by contrapositive negates both the conclusion as well as the hypothesis and proves it directly. All right, so when to use proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction can be a very nice method to use when solving difficult proofs. Thus, proof by contradiction are best used in certain situations, such as when solving for mathematical assumptions, such as the square root of two is irrational, with propos propositional logic, like if P then Q, with propositional logic that involves nested quantifiers, or when a statement or theorem says a certain thing cannot exist or cannot happen. So when you're already given the negation of something. However, there are some limitations and proof by contradiction can be difficult in the following situations. When the statement you're solving is not precise, this would make it difficult to negate and form a logical argument, or when a direct proof could be used. This can make the proof by contradiction confusing and hard to follow. Our first example, we are going to use proof by contradiction to show that if x is an integer and if 3x plus 2 is even, then x is even. So our hypothesis, p, is x is an integer and 3x plus 2 is even. Our conclusion, q, is that x is even. So you can see we have an if p then q statement. Our contradiction statement is that x is an integer and 3x plus 2 is even and x is odd. So this is our p and not q statement. So we are supposing that 3x plus 2 is even and x is odd. Since x is odd, and the product of two odd numbers is also odd, it follows that 3x is odd. So we can also say 
3x plus 2 is odd. This contradicts our first statement that 3x plus 2 is even. And this shows us that x is odd is wrong. With the contradiction, we can conclude that if x is an integer and 3x plus 2 is even, then x is even. For example 2, we will use proof by contradiction to show that there is no rational number r for which r cubed plus r plus 1 equals 0. We are going to assume that r equals a over b is a root where a and b are integers and a over b is in lowest terms. So we substitute a over b into equation 1. And what we get is a over b cubed plus a over b plus 1 equals 0. This is going to be our second equation that we'll use. Now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by b cubed. And here we get a cubed plus ab squared plus b cubed equals 0. All right, and now we have three cases with the numbers that we have left. We have the first case that a is odd and b is odd. Second case that a is odd and b is even. And a third case that a is even and b is odd. For our first case, with a being odd and b being odd, we get the sum of three odd numbers which is odd. So the left-hand side of the equation is odd, which is not equal to the right-hand side of the equation, which is 0. Therefore, case 1 cannot be the case. For our case 2, we have that a is odd and b is even. So we get an odd plus an even plus an even on the left-hand side, which is an odd which is not equal to 0. Therefore, case 2 can also not be the case. Case 3, we have a is even and b is odd. So we get an even plus an even plus an odd, which is odd, which is still not equal to 0. Therefore, case 3 is also not the case. And we have no case where a and b are both even because the fraction a over b is in simplest terms, so they cannot be even at the same time. Therefore, we see that in all cases, 1, 2, and 3, the left-hand side is odd and the right-hand side is 0, which is a contradiction. So the rational number, so we see that there is no rational number r such that r cubed plus r plus 1 equals 0. As you can see from the examples, proof by contradiction is a powerful tool that you can use when problem solving for proofs. It is useful for proving mathematical assumptions, uh, propositional logic, and nested quantifiers.